Good morning, Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey with daily devotions for Friday, November the 27th, 2020. Well, I hope you had a, a great Thanksgiving yesterday and, and didn't even think about stepping on the scale to weigh yourself this morning. Anyway, today we want to shift gears a little bit from giving thanks to making choices. Because our reading this morning from the prophet Amos reminds us that, that life is a series of choices. He was speaking out, of course, against those who had made poor choices, those who had trampled the poor, those who had experienced the finer things in life at the expense of the poor. Instead, what Amos was preaching was seeking good, not evil, establishing justice instead of pushing the needy aside. Why? Well, because, again, choices have consequences, real-life consequences. So hate evil and love good, he writes, and establish justice, he urges. However, before we continue to consider this question of choices and their consequences this morning, let's begin first, as we always do, with the service of responsive prayer, namely the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Luther's morning prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, again, our reading this morning is from the Old Testament book of the prophet Amos, um, the fifth chapter, uh, verses 10 through 15. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. And therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you've built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You've planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bride and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. It strikes me as I read this again that uh, Amos could have been writing this today, um, instead of 2,700 years ago or whatever. Uh, you know, the old saying about the, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And it's so true. The same issues that he identified, the same wrongs he spoke out against, still exist in human society today, even within our own country. Uh, the deep inequality between rich and poor, and the, at times those who take advantage um, of, the, of, of those who are more vulnerable and are weaker, it still goes on. Uh, tragically still goes on. And that's because we haven't changed. As human beings, um, 
so much about our lives have changed, but as human beings, we haven't changed. Um, Lutherans think of that in terms of that we are saints and sinners at the same time. Uh, there's good and bad within each of us. The Russian author Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, once wrote, and he described it this way, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil, he writes, cuts through the heart of every human being. During the trial of Adolf Eichmann, the mastermind of the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, a Jewish man who had just given evidence against him was found later weeping in the corridor. And his friend asked him, why are you crying? And the man replied, because I realize now that he is just a man like I am. I could have done what he did. He had imagined some awful monster, but when he saw Eichmann right there in front of him, he realized that the Nazi was just a man. And the awful truth dawned on him. There are not two categories of people, good or evil. We are all sinful. And so we all need to face up to the fact that we are all born into the same condition. We call it the human condition. We have a bias to reject God. And Amos, like all the other biblical writers, wants us to see that. Because before we can be given the cure, in a sense, we need to understand that we are ill in the first place. And so there's always, though, this choice. We have good and evil in us, but it grows out of the fact that there's always choices before us. Uh, Cicero, the Roman philosopher, once said, the function of wisdom is discriminating between good and evil. But think about it. Life is full of choices. Um, we all have that in common every single day, every single moment. We make choices, what to eat, what to wear, what to say, what to do, how to act. Uh, we make thousands of choices each and every day. Um, a choice to, uh, as to how we are going to treat other people, a choice as to how uh, we're going to spend our time. The choices that we make today, though, are the ones that we're going to have to live with tomorrow. So there's this idea of consequences. Choices inevitably lead to consequences. Billy Graham once said, the strongest principle of life and blessings lies in our choice. Our life is the sum result, he wrote, of all the choices we make, both consciously and unconsciously. If we can control the process of choosing, we can take control of all the aspects of our life. We can find the freedom that comes from being in charge of our life. So start with what is right rather than what is acceptable, said Graham. Because if you don't make a decision, then time will make it for you, and time will always side against you. Again, Amos, seek good and not evil. Seek justice. Eleanor Roosevelt um, said something very much uh, the same. She said, one's philosophy is not best expressed in words. It is expressed in the choices one makes. In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves, she said. The process never ends until we die. And the choices that we make are ultimately our responsibility. And C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity put it this way, Every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole with all your innumerable choices all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing into either into a, a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature. Either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself, or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, and eternal loneliness. Each of us, at each moment, is progressing to the one state or the other. Seek good, not evil. Hate evil. Love good. Um, so wisdom is in knowing the, the right 
choice to make. Maturity, someone once said, is recognizing that the choices we make, again, carry with them consequences. David Huss writes that he had a, a good laugh after he saw the following in the newspaper uh, some time back about a teacher who found a great way to make uh, students pay for their crimes, to teach them that, that actions have consequences, choices have consequences. Troublemakers apparently at Riverside Brookfield High in Chicago uh, were forced to serve after school detentions uh, in the Frank Sinatra Detention Club. There for 30 minutes they would have to sit still, not talking, no homework, no snoozing, and simply listen to Frank Sinatra croon songs. The kids hate it. They're miserable, reports teacher Bruce Janu, a, a Sinatra fan, who devised the club as a way to make detention more fun for him and less so for the kids. It just got to where I couldn't stand it, said one senior. It was so boring. Janu isn't totally heartless, though. He, he lets students sing along if they want to, but nobody does. Now, I think if I had a teacher who did that back when I was in high school, I probably would have purposely made bad choices so that I could go and listen to Sinatra, but that's just me. So life is full of choices. Amos was trying to tell the people of, of his day that he was speaking to. Again, we talked about this, I think, a few weeks back. Um, he was from the South, but he, he actually uh, was, was preaching to those in the North. He saw all that was wrong in the society around him, and he was trying to, to point that out to them, the mistakes they were making, the bad, poor choices that they were making. But life is like that. Life is, is always throwing choices at us. Somebody once described it this way, life is like a batting cage. The balls keep coming and coming, and, and sometimes we hit home runs, and sometimes we hit some fouls, and sometimes we just plain strike out. But no matter how miserably we fail, the balls will continue to come, and we either choose to swing on or, or to step aside and just watch the balls fly by. But regardless of what you choose, the balls continue to come until there are no more. Well, life is the same. It's made of choices that come our way, and as they come, we have to choose between good or evil. Sometimes we make good choices, and sometimes we make bad. But regardless how bad we fail and how tired we get, the choices still come, and we choose either to swing on or to simply step aside and watch them go by. But even in that, we have still made a choice to win or lose, to succeed or fail, to swing on or to just quit. Again, life is a series of choices, and it's important to realize that and to realize that, that those choices have consequences. And so we're not always, we're not going to be perfect in each and every situation. We're going to make some mistakes, some real big ones even at times. But the hope is that we will strive to do what is right, to do what is good. And ultimately, we trust and we fall back on the grace and mercy of God. Let's close this morning with the prayer for the week. God of glory and might, we give thanks that you are our God and that we are the sheep in your hand. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you one more time this week on uh, tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.